Well, having uh, having the metaverse be a version of hell was something that was kind of comical to me. Hey everyone, uh, we're going to be talking about Hell, a cyberpunk thriller. This is a novel based on the video game, and it's a pretty fun novel. I enjoyed the story really well. There are some changes to it from the video game that we'll get into later, but let's talk about the story really quick. So our story starts with uh, Gideon. He is having a dream, and he's basically falling into hell. And in this book, uh, hell is a giant mouth with jagged teeth, or at least that's the entrance to it. And he goes on to describe like his flesh cracking and burning off, and just a whole bunch of other stuff that you would imagine would happen if you go to hell. He is awoken, and, you know, Basically, he and his girlfriend, Rachel, get jumped by a bunch of assassins who try to kill him. Well, try to kill both of them. And it's revealed that in this world, the entire government has been replaced by a theocratic dictatorship. So it's all very, very religious. And they hate everything that's fun. Everything and anything. Also, in this world, hell is real. You can actually go there if you have the right equipment. And if you are bad, or if you anger the government enough, they'll send you to hell. It's kind of crazy. And, yeah, this is going to make more sense later on, but it's kind of, um, kind of weird the way it's all done. So Gideon and Rachel work for an agency called ARC, This is similar to the FBI, but it's more like cyberspace crime. So they're dealing with computers, they're dealing with virtual reality, and it's kind of like them dealing with crimes on what some people consider to be the metaverse today, but I don't know. It's weird. (laughs) It's very, very weird. Anyway, uh, Gideon tells us uh, a lot about the world. He's going to be our narrator for the entire book. And he talks about just the religious dictatorship that's going on. He talks about how demons walk the earth and how the United States is run by someone named Celine Salou. And I'll talk more about her later on. And I'm going to keep referring to her as her because... That's the way she's referred to for most of the book, except for in a few instances that I'll talk a little bit more about later. So, the story is basically Gideon and Rachel trying to figure out why the government has targeted them for execution, and this leads them to talk to former co-workers, uh, demons, and eventually the resistance against the government. There's one kind of sad moment where Rachel goes to try to talk to a former co-worker. She recognizes her and then immediately screams that Rachel and Gideon are supposed to be killed. So she, you kind of get the idea that everyone that they know and have uh, become friends with has kind of turned their back on them. And if you haven't turned your back on them, you're going to get killed. This is essentially a police state, but a really incompetent police state. It's it's very strange and interesting all at the same time. It, basically, the government is incompetent for parts of the plot when they need to be incompetent. And they're all-powerful and all-knowing when the plot needs them to be. This isn't a fault of the author. It kind of plays into the way the video game plays out, so... I can't really fault Chet for that. Anyway, Gideon and Rachel's investigation leads them to hell. And, yeah, it's kind of weird. They go to hell like three times, and every time they go there, they have to put on these special helmets that they are told will separate their souls from their bodies but keep them alive in some way. And then near the end of the book, it's revealed that these are just virtual reality helmets that they put on. Because hell isn't actually real, it's a virtual reality program. All the demons aren't real, they're really androids, and everything that the government has been telling the people is a lie. For the most part, there's still a few things that they're kind of right on, but that's besides the point. 
So, this all leads to them going to hell multiple times, fighting virtual reality demons, and then eventually they have to go there to do something, and Rachel ends up being the one who has to go, and she ends up dying. So near the end of the book, Rachel dies, and it goes more into the way the video game is set up, which I'll talk a little bit more in a minute. But yeah, Rachel dies, and Gideon's the only one left. It's also revealed that Gideon, Rachel, and four out of the other five people that were targeted for assassination are all double agents, basically. They were members of the resistance who got captured by the government. Then the government programmed them to go kill people in the resistance, but that programming didn't hold, and now the government's trying to like clean up their mess, or at least was trying to. It all boils down to, well, basically it all comes down to uh, Gideon crashing the hell program with the help of the resistance, and then confronting Celine Salou and killing her at the very end of the book. It is a very interesting story, but it's wrapped up pretty quick, much like the video game was. So what are the differences between the book and the game? Well, the book largely follows the plot of the game if you chose Gideon to be your playable character. If you chose Rachel, then everything kind of flips where Rachel does everything with the exception of the part where they need to go into the hell program to find a certain piece of information to help them crash it. If you chose Rachel in the game, Gideon is the one that does this and Gideon is the one that dies. So yeah, if you, if you thought you were, oh gosh, how do I want to phrase this? So if you chose the Gideon, if you chose Gideon to be your playable character in the game, you're basically following the entire plot of the book as well. Up until the end, that is when probably the biggest split between the book and the, and the game happens. In the game, you come across Celine Salou at the end, and you just beat her unconscious and, and keep going and then eventually crash the hell program. In this one, or in the book, uh, you they don't do that and there are a lot more side characters involved because they don't want to make it feel like like Gideon does everything it's more spread out so stuff will happen kind of if this was a movie stuff would happen off screen and everything like that which it, it makes more sense to do as a book because you have this whole resistance and you're not expected to do everything to move the plot of the game forward because that's just not how a book would be done. So, with Celine Salou at the end of the book, she is not captured by the government or anything like that. She manages to escape. And then Gideon decides he needs to go to the grave. He needs to go to Rachel's grave to visit her. He does that, and then somehow Celine Salou is hiding in the crypt of this grave, waiting for Gideon, and has been there for weeks. And then also mysteriously becomes a man, because they start using male pronouns for her. It's, it's weird. And she try, Celine tries to shoot Gideon, but doesn't because the other person that Gideon brings along with him gets the drop on her. She tries to run away, trips, and cracks her head open on Rachel's monument. And then she dies there. It's a, it's a little abrupt, and it's, it's not as satisfying an ending as one might hope for, but it is a, it is a better ending than the video game does because the video game just you know you beat her unconscious crash crash the hell program and then you're given a tight wrap up of okay and then everything's fine so at least with the the book you're kind of left off on 
everything is better, but it's not done because there's still like pockets of resistance for people that still want to live in a in a theocratic democracy. But uh, yeah, so it's not completely wrapped up. Those are really the major differences. Just uh, you can have multiple points of view in the game. The ending is different, and the book has more characters doing stuff than the video game does. So this this just confused the shit out of me. <laughs> because they keep going back and forth on what's, what the Celine Salou's gender is. Um, I wasn't really expecting to be talking about this. Uh, however... It was a pretty confusing point in the, in the book. She normally she is referred to as a woman, and then occasionally when she needs to do something violent, she's given male pronouns. So at the end of the book, when she's holding Gideon hostage, she's going to well not really hostage, but she's holding them at gunpoint. It flips to calling her he. And that was kind of weird to me. We're also given a little bit when uh, Gideon and Rachel first talk to uh, Mr. Beautiful. He's one of the android uh, demons that they have to go through and they have to deal. They have to do some weird side mission for him. Mr. Beautiful tells the reader a little bit about Celine's past and how she may or may not have changed genders at some point. Uh, Beautiful kind of calls Salu a hermaphrodite, or at least suggests that she has both male and female reproductive organs, or he could be using it as like a derogatory term to refer refer to her as a transsexual. We're not given an answer, and I don't think we really needed one, and I don't think we really even needed that in the book at all. It's just sort of there. And I don't know why it was there, but by having a, at that time, a demon say this, it made me think that it wasn't true. And, you know, because it is a bad guy who's trying to force these two into doing stuff. And, you know, it, I don't know, it doesn't really, it doesn't really make any sense what he says. And I think the author probably gave up on that because it's kind of weird to throw that in there. And I didn't see anything when I read through like the a summary of the game or like a few of the other notes on the game. I didn't see anything about that in there. It just felt kind of weird to have that in. And, and it was just very, very confusing that they keep that um that chat keeps calling. Celine Salou, either a woman or a man, and it changes depending on, like, really her actions and how aggressive she is. It was a really strange thing that's in this. So, I don't know if we can really trust Mr. Beautiful's description of what's going on or anything like that, but yeah, this was a weird part that I just wanted to talk about because it confused the hell out of me while I was reading it. I, I really like this book. Uh, I might have a different opinion if I played the game before reading it. Uh, there were some changes to the game's story. There were more characters added, which I think was probably necessary for telling the story. And the game gives you like more options to play. Uh, to play. So you can either play it as Gideon or Rachel. I felt like that was kind of a necessary change for the book because... Chet's trying to stay faithful to the plot of the game, and at that and that uh, that particular point where one of them has to die, you can't have both die; otherwise, the book wouldn't make any sense anymore. So, yeah, it was kind of cool the way he did that, and he also did, a, at least in my opinion, a good job of kind of limiting some of the video game moments where you have one person just going crazy and taking on the entire government by themselves and winning. So I'm glad that uh, that that stuff was kind of kind of downplayed to have the book make more sense. 
you know, because in the video game you you do everything and looking at it critically kind of makes you wonder why the character would need the rebel group at all in the book like if they did a literal translation of the video game into a book then it wouldn't really make sense for the rebel faction to even be there because you have the hero just going around doing everything and yeah the the rebels would just kind of get in the way it, yeah it's kind of weird it, it was um one thing i didn't like is uh is how the government seemingly can't catch gideon and rachel like this is supposed to be a police state that keeps a close watch on on the entire civilian population uh, the reader is shown that the government has agents everywhere especially like near the beginning of the book however they can't find the rebels and they can't catch the heroes in this it seems really weird that they're just that the the government is just conveniently incompetent at times so that was something that i i felt was odd and they probably could have changed stuff around a little bit more like i don't know have the main characters bribing people or have them actually like wear a disguise or something because in this futuristic world you should be able to buy a mask or something like that that'll actually cover up your face you can get people to do plastic surgery to alter your face in basically like a back alley chop shop but you can't just have them make a mask that would fit on your face perfectly and change the way you look. I don't know. There were just kind of some some weird stuff. I do like a lot of the things in this, like the like our main characters being deep cover assassins. I thought that was kind of cool. And yeah, overall, I just I really did enjoy it. There are just a few minor things that I that I just was bothered by. And I already talked about one of them in length, so I don't need to go into that anymore. So this was my first introduction into Hell, a cyberpunk thriller. And I wonder how many other people came across the game by reading the novel. And I I wonder that about a lot of the, the video game novels that I've read so far, where... I didn't know that there was a video game called Hell, a cyberpunk thriller. So seeing the the novel at the end of the Xbox novel was kind of interesting. And I, I wondered, you know, what is that? Let me let me pick that one up and I'll if it's cheap, I'll pick that one up and see what it's about. And yeah, it was pretty good. It's kind of a, a fun story. I, I think it's rather funny that in this book the metaverse is literally hell. I I honestly think that's a pretty accurate depiction of how I feel when I listen to somebody describe the metaverse to me, so I think that it's pretty fun that that's the way they went with this. And yeah, it's a it's a fun story. It really is. I don't know if I'll go and find a copy of the video game somewhere because I think I can get it on good, on uh, good old games or something like that. And I don't know. It's it's just a it's a very interesting story, I think. Chet did a good job of making it into an actual novel and not, you know, just a series of video game moments or anything like that. Anyway, uh, let me know what you think in the comments below and if you played Hella Cyberpunk Thriller, please let me know that as well, because that's something that I I don't know if I'm going to like it or if I would like it or not. So that's pretty much what, uh, what I would like to know. So I will talk to you all later. Bye.